Aristotle, born around 384 BCE in the city of Stagira in northern Greece, was one of the greatest philosophers of all times and the most significant philosopher in history, a status he held at least until the 19th century. At the age of 17, he went to Athens and joined Plato's Academia, remaining there for 20 years until the death of his teacher Plato. Later, he went back to Macedonia and served as the tutor to Alexander the Great when he was 13. Little is known about their interaction and Aristotle's influence on Alexander's plans for world conquest. After Alexander's death, Aristotle returned to Athens and established his own school of philosophy in the Lyceum, where he managed courses for 12 years. Most of his written work was lost, and all we have is the lecture notes from his students. Aristotle departed from Plato's idealism and rejected his theory of forms in favor of an empirical approach to understanding the nature of reality and he stated that the best way to knowledge is through studying natural philosophy, which we call today science. We can consider Aristotle the first true scientist in history. He claimed that everything is composed of five elements, earth, water, air, fire, and ether. Aristotle also explained every object by the so-called four causes, material or physical matter, formal, efficient, and final cause. Let's use his own example, a bronze statue. The material cause is bronze. The formal cause is how the material is arranged together to form a human shape. The efficient cause would be the artist who made the statue from the bronze material. And finally, the final cause is the purpose or the reason why it was done, which in this case is a pleasant piece of art people can enjoy. So we can say that bronze is a potential amusement for the people. In biology, he suggested that every life originated from less complex forms, gradually over generations, reminding us of Darwin's theory of evolution which emerged 2000 years later. Some of Aristotle's biological observations, such as those regarding the reproductive arm of the octopus, were not accepted until they were validated in the 19th century. Aristotle profoundly influenced science until the Enlightenment theories were developed. Aristotle was the first to study formal logic, which helped in validating arguments. For example, consider this argument. So, the first premise, all cats are predators. The second premise, a lion is a cat. The conclusion, a lion is a predator. However, this method is used to assess validity, not to establish truthfulness. The focus is on reasoning, irrespective of whether the premises or conclusions are true or false. As an illustration, consider this argument. All mammals can talk my cat is a mammal therefore my cat can talk this is a valid argument even though both the first premise and the conclusion are false aristotle developed an ethical system known as virtue ethics he asserted that by learning how to become virtuous we will end up doing good things naturally or in other words if we become good people only good actions will come out he believed that nature built into us the desire to be good. He also outlined several virtues in his writings, like courage, temperance, generosity, magnificence, magnanimity, truthfulness, friendliness, and suggested that virtue should lie between two extremes, the excess and the deficiency. For example, extreme courage borders on recklessness, while a lack of it would make you a coward. Aristotle explained that virtue ethics or becoming virtuous is important in order to achieve the ultimate goal, which is eudaimonia or human flourishing that allows us to be happy and live life as it should be lived. Aristotle had impressive scientific theories considering the time he lived in 
even if they were proven wrong today with science advancement, his scientific methods and disciplines inspired the evolution of science. We can consider him as one of the first and most important scientists in history. In metaphysics, he claimed that in a moving world, if every motion has a mover and every cause has a causer, this chain of causation leads to the conclusion of an uncaused causer or an unmoved mover. This argument has been employed by religions to support the existence of a logical foundation for God's existence. In short words, we can end this biography by using Dante's famous words about Aristotle, the master of those who know.